I think most people know now that climate change is already with us. There are warmer, warm periods now than we've ever seen before. And there are fewer truly cold periods in most parts of the world. We're seeing melting glaciers, we're seeing changes in sea ice, and there's lots of other changes as well. They have really serious implications for people and for ecosystems. In parts of the world, farmers are changing their farming practices. They're changing when they plant. They're changing what crops they plant. Um, in some places that have traditionally had two crops per year, they only have one now. Their second rainy season has become too, too you know, unpredictable. These decisions, these are known as adaptation. Adaptation is the process of responding to the, these changes in the climate so as to reduce harm or um, to take advantage of, of benefits that might come from the changing climate. This question of adaptation is one we'll be facing for a while. Um, it's a new issue. There's, there's not a lot that we know about it. Uh, it's something we're going to have to learn about as we go along. But one thing that I think is clear from the outset is that poor people have fewer adaptation options and they're hit harder by um, some of these impacts. For a poor family that eats the food they grow for themselves, a flood or a drought might mean hunger or it might mean homelessness. And as we think about adaptation, these are the people we want to be thinking about first um, as they're the weakest link in the chain, so to speak. As we think about people's adaptation to climate change, if you can imagine a graph of, um, say, a household's well-being, um, where the x-axis is time and the y-axis is their well-being, um, everyone goes through their normal ups and downs, and that's what we're seeing at the start of this graph. But for a poor farming household, a drought could really decrease their well-being. It could really make a difference. In some cases, it makes a permanent difference. In order, for instance, to, um, to survive the drought, they might sell important assets like, um, uh, like a, an animal or um, some of their tools. And as a result, they um, might actually not return to their original level of well-being because they've lost assets they use for their livelihoods. And so we see here how a drought can, can permanently keep people in poverty. Um, if uh, they don't have what's called resilience. In this second graphic, um, you see a resilient household where um, there was a safety net in the form of insurance or stored food or um, a government program that provide labor during the drought. And uh, so the, the household didn't have to sell their assets or they didn't have to pull their children out of school. And they could return more quickly to their original level of well-being. This resilience is a really important asset as the climate changes. This third graphic represents a family that has moved beyond resilience to really um, having adapted to a new climate. In this, in this graphic, you see their well-being doesn't change in the course of the drought. Um, and the drought is perceived, as far as they're concerned, as, as a normal event. It doesn't affect their, their well-being. Um, and this would suggest they're, they're fully adapted to that drought um, at this point, perhaps using drought-resistant crops for their farming, or um, if they have early warning systems that, that um, let them know in advance that a drought is coming so that they can prepare for it, um, so that their well-being doesn't um, decrease significantly over the course of the drought. Of course, this kind of adaptation isn't really the end in itself. For a poor farming family, their normal levels of, of well-being are really not adequate um, in, a, in many parts of Africa, in Latin America, in poor parts of Asia. People are really trying to raise their well-being and to do this while the climate changes is the real thing that we're aiming at as we think about adaptation for poor people. Looking forward, WRI is, is working with its partners on developing processes for planning for adaptation and for monitoring adaptation, for figuring out what works in terms of developing the systems and capacities that are needed to support people in adjusting to their climate as it changes. Adaptation requires action at a number of different levels. WRI has work on the global level, for example, and the international climate change negotiations um, have elements that, that are aimed at supporting and facilitating adaptation. 
The national level is also really important. Um, decisions that governments make really can make a difference in empowering their people to adapt and creating incentives for them to adapt or putting up barriers that make it hard to adapt effectively. There's also a whole host of decisions at the local level and institutions that are really important for people, particularly poor people, um, to adapt to their changing climate. This is a, a brand new challenge um, for the whole world to figure out how do we adapt to our changing climate. Um, it's something we're all going to face together, uh, but some people will be hit harder than others and it's an opportunity for the global community um, to reach out and support those who are most vulnerable.